So welcome to this, our third week in our season of prayer and fasting at the Hill Vallejo. So glad that you've decided to join us today. And as we enter into this third and final week, we're believing exciting things are gonna happen. You know, the emphasis of this time of prayer and fasting is for us to develop a kingdom mindset. We want to reset for 2023. We want to orient our thinking, transform our minds to the kingdom of God. And so to help us along the way, we are looking at the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter five as our guide. And you know, something about the Beatitudes, the first four are God word and the last four are man word. The first four are subjective and the last four are objective. And so as we're looking at these uh, Beatitudes, helping us to rethink and reset our mindset to get us into a kingdom mindset. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at Matthew chapter 5 and just do a quick 30,000 foot view of verses 9 through 12 as uh, that's our theme and those are the verses for this week. So in Matthew chapter 5 it says in verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, another word for blessed there is congratulations. And so Jesus is saying, congratulations when you're persecuted. Congratulations when people are reviling you and, and, and saying all kinds of evil things about you, and even if they're causing you physical harm. I'm telling you, if we're going to rejoice and we're going to really get into that, we're going to need a kingdom mindset. We're going to have to reset our thinking. But you know, uh, God calls us to be peacemakers. He is the ultimate peacemaker. He sent Jesus to make peace between God and man. And now Jesus calls us to be peacemakers with one another. And you know, Jesus followed in his father's footsteps and we are to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And so this week we want to be uh, really emphasizing on being peacemakers. It's a tough thing. Someone said that those words of Jesus on being peacemakers are probably the least followed words of everything that he taught us because it's hard. All you have to do is look at the news, scroll down on, the, on social media, and you see just how much conflict there is in the world, whether it's political or wars or in the news, um, people harming one another, but God calls us to be different. Jesus said that uh, we can do this if we follow after him. And then when he talks about uh, being persecuted and, and having people say all kinds of things, know that we're in good company because it was done for the pro to the prophets as well. And you know, God promises us an eternal kingdom. Sometimes, again, we need a kingdom mindset because we, we think that this life is, is, is lasting for eternity. We think this, this it takes a, a lifetime is a long time. But if you were to look at it in, in comparison to say a yardstick, let's say the 36 inches on a yardstick was eternity, this life wouldn't even be a millimeter. And so Jesus is trying to give us a perspective. And I urge us this week to, to think, uh, focus on, on heaven, focus on what we're about, focus on uh, going beyond. And then, and then think about also those that are suffering in our world, um, those that are being persecuted. And let's spend some time praying for our missionaries, praying for people in other parts of the world that are, are being harmed because of their faith. And let's pray for them and ask God to, to show His mercy, but also that, uh, that their efforts would be effective in calling people calling people to faith and that they really would see uh, the love of Jesus even in that turmoil and in their affliction. You know, Jesus, when he uh, went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he took some disciples with him. And he said, I want you to pray with me. He said, I want you to pray with me, just an hour. And he went off to pray and when he came back, he, he saw that they were asleep. And he made this statement. He said, you know, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And that's really true. And that's part of what we're doing in this, 
in this season of prayer is we're trying to not only reset our minds, not only to develop a kingdom mindset, but we're also realizing that as we fast and as we pray, we really need to bring our flesh under control. And in Galatians chapter 5, it, it, it says in verses 16 and 17, it says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you'll not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with one another. The Spirit is willing, flesh is weak. They live in con their contrary natures. And so by prayer and fasting, resetting, get a kingdom mindset, I believe we'll be able to bring our flesh under control. And once we bring our flesh under control, we yield to the power of the Spirit. And as we yield to the power of the Spirit, guess what? We're going to see this transformation. We will begin to really see ourselves the way Jesus sees us, as peacemakers and as those who can persevere through tough times. So I urge you this week that you and I together, we would continue to persevere, to continue on. Let's finish strong as we continue on in this season of prayer and fasting. You know, Derek Prince said this, I want to read this quote. He says, the body makes a great servant, but a terrible master. I pray this week that you'd be able to have the spirit be your master and bring that flesh and, and, and that will and that mind and emotion under the control of the Spirit and that you're really going to prosper, be fruitful this week. So thanks for joining us and we pray God's blessing on you.